Hi friends, it's time for social studies today. So stop what you're doing. If you have not watched the video that my face is kind of halfway covering up, you need to go back and watch this video. This video is gonna give you so much more information than I ever could. I know it's long, I know it's a little tad bit boring, but it gives you so much information about Stephen F. Austin and the old 300 that I really want you to watch it. But I'm also going to do a couple of PowerPoint slides and explain your assignment today just so you know what's going on. All right, y'all ready? So in social studies, we have been talking about the impresario system and Texas colonization. Well, today I told you we were going to talk about Moses Austin and Stephen F. Austin. So let's get started. If you are doing your notes booklet, go ahead and get that out and follow along with me. All right, who came from the U.S. to help colonize Texas? So we started off on Monday, we talked about how Mexico got their independence from Spain and then we became under the Mexican government. Y'all remember that? So we're under Mexican government. It's more of a democracy, kind of like we have today. And then we talked about how that freedom impacted Texas. So now we're going to talk about who actually came and colonized Texas. There's all this land. They're doing land grant systems. And they have this where they're going to give people this land. So who came? So Moses Austin was actually given a land grant. And he was going to bring 300 families to Texas. But before he was able to carry out his plan, unfortunately, Moses Austin died. And his son, Stephen F. Austin, continued his father's plan. And y'all have probably heard the name Stephen S. F. Ugh. Stephen F. Austin a million times. If not, you're about to hear it a million times. Um, so Stephen F. Austin was like, hey, I'm going to go to Texas in 1821, and he is going to choose land for his colony. So in order to get those people to move to his colony, this is real important. It's part of your assignment today. So listen up. He decided to write letters to people, and he decided to put ads in newspapers. He knew that a successful colony had to have hardworking people. And he also read every response that he received from his ads. And he chose who he thought would be best for the colony. So he's trying to get people to come live in his colony. He wants the best people. He's putting out ads, flyers. Um, he wrote letters to people. And he became known as the father of Texas. That's real important to remember. Stephen F. Austin is the father of Texas. And the first Austin colonists became known as the old 300. Now, you should have finished watching that video I told you was a little bit boring. It talked about um, Moses Austin, Stephen F. Austin, and the old 300. So you should have a little bit of background knowledge on that as I'm talking. So the land that Austin chose was right by the Brazos River. So he made sure to pick land that had resources for his colony, right by the river, right where they could have some water. So Jane Long came to Texas with her husband, who was a soldier. And after living in a fort for a while with her two children, she found out her husband had died. So then she moved to the Austin colony and she ran a hotel there and she became known as the mother of Texas. So father of Texas was Jane Long, or father of Texas was Steve uh, F. Austin and Jane Long became known as the mother of Texas and she ran a hotel. So what's Texas fever? So Stephen F. Austin was the first impresario to colonize Texas. Remember we talked about impresario is and that is a person who makes all the arrangements to bring settlers to a colony. So Stephen F. Austin was the very first impresario. He was given land by the Mexican government, and he was he was chosen to um, help colonize Texas and get people in. So he made those ads. He wanted people to come. He wanted the best people to come and be there. So um, even though he was the first, there were a ton of impresarios after him. So during this time in the United States, buying land was honestly, it was getting more difficult. Stephen Austin persuaded the Mexican government to pass laws that would help people move to Texas and clear their debt owed to the United States. So he's like, hey, I got a bright idea. Here's my plan. If they move to Texas, we'll clear their debt owed to the United States. So then people were actually able to come to Texas, become an impresario, and get land to start new colonies with a land grant from the Mexican government. So this is how Texas fever began, and thousands of people started to move there. They're like, hey, if I move there, my, de my debt's going to be gone. I can be an impresario. I can have this land. I can give it to other people. We can start forming colonies. And so that's how Texas fever started.
So who helped colonize Texas from Mexico? Before the colonists arrived in Texas, people actually were already living there. Most people were living there were Spaniards and Mexicans, and they were called Tejanos and Tejanas. Remember, we call we talked about Tejano, and a Tejano is the um, unique cultural blending of Spanish and American traditions, all in Texas. So Spanish and American traditions. So a Tejano rancher named Erasmo Seguin was the person that welcomed Stephen Austin's father to the land when he first arrived in Texas. So Erasmo and his son Juan also became friends with Stephen Austin and they did business with him because they're like, hey, we did business with your father. Might as well do business with you. So then Martin de Leon was a Texas rancher that brought over 100 families to Texas from Mexico in 1824. 100. Oh, my gosh. Him and his wife, Victoria, they founded the town named... Victoria on the Guadalupe River. He was the first Mexican impresario in Texas. He came from Mexico in Texas. He was an impresario because remember impresarios, they were given land by the Mexican government so that they could colonize Texas. So they started a school and a church in Victoria and Victoria became a center for trading goods. But when Martin died, his wife continued to run the town of Victoria. And then one more person that we're going to talk about, and maybe you guys, we did a um, we did a little PowerPoint, a project. That's what I'm trying to say. We did a project at the very beginning of school where you guys got to pick people and you either made a poster or a PowerPoint over your person. And maybe you had some of these people. So if you're in class right now and you're thinking, oh, I did Stephen F. Austin. I did Erasmus Seguin. I did Moses Austin. I did Martin De Leon. Maybe you know some things that I don't know and I, I, I'm not sharing. So maybe you can ask your teacher if you would like to share those things too. Or if you're one of my virtual kiddos, I would love to hear it in small group. What do you know about these people? Otherwise, let's keep going. Lorenzo de Zavala was approved for a land grant to bring 500 Mexican residents to Texas, and they settled just northeast of the Austin colony. How cool. Now, the big thing, so the big takeaways today what are going to be we had Moses Austin, and he started this whole thing. He was going to colonize, and he made, with the Mexican government, he was going to colonize Texas. But he passed away, and his son, Stephen F. Austin, took over. He was our first impresario, and he's the father of Texas. And he brought all 300 people over, and they colonized um, Texas. And then a bunch of other people started colonizing Texas because of his great idea. Come in Texas. You won't have your debt anymore. You can become an impresario. You can make colonies. We'll give you land grants and you can colonize Texas because they wanted people to live there. All right, guys. So that's all about Moses Austin and Stephen F. Austin. You should have watched that video. Okay. That video was really going to be not just this video, but the video above or below or wherever your teacher puts it about Moses Austin and Stephen S. Austin and the old 300. It's very important for you to watch because it's going to help you with your assignment today. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to pretend that you're Stephen F. Austin. So in your brain, pretend. I know, girls, it's a little weird, but that's okay. <laughs> pretend you're Stephen F. Austin. Okay. You want people to come to your colony and live in your colony. You want them to live there, but you want them to be the best people, the most hardworking people. You want them to write to you and want to come to Texas. Well, your job today is you are going to create an ad. So you're going to create an ad to attract the right type of person that you want to come join your colony. Now, I have a template that you are going to use and it looks like this. It just says Texas Times at the top. Here, let me see if I can make myself a little bigger. I know I'm tiny in the corner. Here we go. Okay, it says Texas Times at the top. You're going to create an ad. Now you can draw pictures here and you can write things on the lines. You're going to create an ad trying to get people to come and live in your colony. You want hardworking people. You want good people. So think of how what can I put on my ad to attract those right people. Now, you're trying to get them to come live in Texas. You want hardworking people. You want good, honest people. 
and you're Stephen F. Austin. So think about that when you are creating your ad. Now this is a grade, so do your very best on it. Um, and just remember what, like if you were gonna come live in Texas, what would you need? Like free land to the most hardworking people or um, anything that you can think of. Be creative, make it colorful and write in complete sentences. Please, as an English teacher, please write in complete sentences. All right, guys, I love y'all so much. Y'all have fun. Make sure you watch both videos today. There are two. And then get started on your ad. All right, guys. Bye.